Well, good evening, church. It is June 17th, uh, Wednesday evening here. I want to talk to you for a few moments about uh, a passage of scripture that's very familiar to many of you. Uh, it comes from Matthew chapter 13. It's also found in uh, the Gospels of Mark and Gospels of Luke, and the Gospel of Luke too. Um, and it's a very familiar passage to you, uh, so familiar that I'm going to just talk about different aspects of it and not actually read it. But if you would like to read it for yourself, it's from Matthew chapter 13, uh, verses 3 through 9. Um, Jesus is talking in that, that section about um, the, uh, the parable of the sower, and he gives this very, what's for many of us, very familiar story about uh, these four types of soils and how uh, he says that a farmer is is going around uh, sowing seed, and the and the seed has a chance to fall on these four types of soils. The first one being a path where obviously it can't take root because it gets trampled on, or the birds come and eat it. The second one being a, a stony ground where it doesn't have room for its roots to grow, uh, so it springs up really quickly. But then the sun comes and it withers. Um, because there's no roots to bring in moisture from the ground. The third one being a uh, thorny ground where there's lots of weeds and thorns, and so it um, th those those weeds and thorns uh, choke out the uh, the seed that comes up, the plant that comes up from the seed. And the last one being a good uh, what Jesus calls a good ground uh, where the plant is able to grow, and it says that some of the seed produced thirty. Some of it produced 60, and some of it produced 100-fold. Before we dive into this scripture, uh, let me give you a, a little bit of a heads up of what we're uh, talking about here tonight. Um, uh, we're going to be talk. We're going to be looking at this passage from the lens of how it applies to churches and the way that churches uh, understand and respond and receive change. How do churches change is what we're talking about tonight. And there's four types of churches, uh, and, and these types of churches will all receive and respond to change differently, and, uh, and that's part of how they function. But only one of these churches is healthy, and you guessed it, it's the church that, uh, that uh, is kind of like the good soil. Uh, just again, as way of, way of uh, introduction, way of kind of disclaimer, I guess I could, I could say, uh, whenever we talk about understanding and uh, interpreting uh, the meaning of the Bible, uh, we generally understand that there is uh, one interpretation of Scripture and that there are many applications. Now, there's exceptions to that rule, such as Old Testament passages that clearly ap apply to Israel in that day that they were given, but then also apply to and, and predict the coming of Jesus or perhaps even the second coming of Jesus. Uh, so, uh, but but for a, as a general rule for understanding biblical interpretation or being able to interpret the, the meaning of the Bible, uh, we say that uh, as a general rule that there is one interpretation of Scripture, but there are many applications of Scripture. And that's what we're doing with our text for tonight from Matthew chapter 13. I'm not saying that Jesus was actually talking about churches. What I'm saying is that th we can take this parable and then we can apply it to uh, the way that uh, different types of churches uh, receive and respond to change. Now, um, in, addition to, in addition to that disclaimer, let me offer another one. Uh, I have commended our church uh, uh, in uh, at a number of times during this coronavirus pandemic that uh, you all have been phenomenal. Uh, I, f I feel very proud of you as, as your pastor, um, that uh, you have all handled uh, the change that has been thrust upon us um, during this coronavirus pandemic uh, and marvelously, I think. Uh, and so don't think that I'm teaching this lesson tonight because Ryan's got a big plan of something that he wants to change in our church and, and he's just kind of uh, preparing us for that or anything else like that. I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. Um, I, I, instead, uh, part of my um, motive for uh, for teaching this tonight is that I think our church is pretty good at receiving and responding to change. Uh, and uh, what you don't want to have happen is you don't want to uh, have say, well, our church is pretty good at this. We don't need to think about it at all. Um, it's because what that what that ends up doing is it makes your church get to a place, it makes the church get to a place where 
uh, you're not good at something. And then there's there then people get upset uh, whenever uh, a teaching comes like tonight. So I hope that I hope that uh, you all understand where I'm coming from. And so let's dive into uh, to this teaching of the the four uh, types of churches and uh, how they respond and receive change. Well, the, the first kind of church is like the church uh, that or like the soil that uh, that is that is a path, right? Uh, there are some churches that. Uh, whenever uh, they uh, uh, hear about change coming, uh, whenever they uh, hear about uh, s- uh, some kind of change that uh, is is about to happen in their church, or maybe uh, there's a there, maybe the deacons uh, come to the church with some kind of change that they're wanting, or maybe that's the pastor, or maybe it's the church council, or, or somebody uh, comes and says that they have an, an, an idea for something new. Uh, this church uh, is is a lot like uh, the soil that's a path in that new ideas don't get a chance to take root. Uh, they just have no ability to root down and penetrate the ground at all. And, and so new ideas kind of just get left on the surface and they're never implemented, they're never even considered, and that's kind of just, that's, that's kind of just how they are. Uh, the, this church is uh, is not at all uh, receptive to uh, change that happens. This church is very much stuck in its traditions. It thinks that nothing needs to change. It thinks that uh, that everything in its church is functioning ju- functioning just fine. And uh, and and they think that they're, if they just keep doing this until Jesus comes back a thousand years from now or whenever it may be, that everything should be fine until then. Um, what this does is that it, 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 there's some consequences for a church that feels like this. Uh, first off, uh, many times uh, people will find that that makes that church very boring. Um, the, this is the kind of church that uh, the pastor kind of usually preaches on a number of different uh, topics or scriptures, and uh, and because he does he won't he doesn't want to offend anybody. He doesn't want to challenge he doesn't want to challenge anybody and make them. Um, uh, respond to uh, the, the the Bible that um, that calls us to, to all be growing to be more like Christ. This, this kind of church is often uh, uh, characterized by singing the same uh, hymns over and over and over. Uh, they have the same soloists that sing the same stuff over and over and over. They just never change anything. Um, and and you know if 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 they decide to that they have to change something like a light bulb, it's going to take a bajillion committee meetings to figure out. Uh, what brand of light bulb and what wattage, and then and then how many how many ladders is it going to take, and how many people need to set up those ladders, and then who's actually going to screw in the light bulb? It, it, I mean, it just it's just crazy uh, what what some of these churches will do, and it makes church very very boring. Beyond that, it makes church very very uh, it makes church lack passion lots of times. Uh, these churches, uh, they get bored with themselves, and and as such, uh, they think that God is boring. And and if you if you come together every single week, uh, possibly even multiple times a week, and you uh, worship a boring God in a boring way, then guess what? You're going to get bored, and you're going to get uh, you're not going to be very passionate about this kind of God. And so uh, it makes them boring, it makes them passionless, but also it makes them unwilling to respond uh, whenever, uh, uh, whenever the Lord lays upon some of their hearts that they should make a change. Uh, because if you're never willing to make a change, then you don't care who's talking about it. You don't care if it's the pastor or the deacons or the church counselor or Jesus himself, because nothing can change, because everything has to stay the same. That's the kind of church that uh, that is is a lot like the 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 soil that's a path, right? No no new ideas ever take root, and uh, and we don't want to be that kind of church because we don't want to uh, we don't want to be boring, we don't want to be passionless, and we certainly don't want to be unwilling and unable to respond whenever Jesus is calling us to do something different. Um, the second kind of soil that we see is the stony, the 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 uh, the soil that is a that is stony. It's got lots of rocks throughout of it, throughout it. And this is uh, the this type of church is a church that uh, that have that has a culture about it that uh, it receives new ideas very quickly. It receives new ideas very easily, but there isn't enough maturity 
or there isn't enough depth in in the church, right? Uh, that uh, that the that the people have themselves as individuals that would allow them to invest their time or money uh, to invest their prayers to invest even their passion in the long haul. And whenever new ideas spring up, they get very excited about it. They're 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 all on board. They applaud new ideas. They they get so excited about it, um, and then nothing is ever fully integrated into the long term ministry of the church. This church is a lot like the stony ground in that uh, everything that seems like it's so full of life happens above the surface. Everything below the surface is very immature and, uh, and eventually leads to the, uh, the plant actually dying. And what happens with this kind of church is that this, this kind of church becomes very ineffective. Uh, they're, they're constantly spinning their wheels trying to think of the next the next big idea that will that will really stick and really work inside of their church. And one of the biggest things that they struggle with is act, is not just the the right idea or uh or or the best thing for their church, but they struggle with just sticking with anything. And what this does is it uh it not only makes the church ineffective, but it's a bad steward, right? You if you have if you're a part of this kind of church, uh, you're going to be very poor. Uh, there's very poor stewardship that's happening. There's lots of money that's wasted on these new ideas. There's lots of time and resources that are wasted on these new ideas. And in the end, they never carry through to fruition. So that's uh, that's the church that's like that's a lot like the stony soil. Um, the the third church is a lot like um, the the thorny soil, uh, the the soil that has thorns and, and thistles and weeds growing in it, and it chokes out the new plant. Um, and this is the kind of this is the kind of church that uh, they also much like the stony soil. Uh, they also receive uh, new ideas very quickly, and they're very excited about these new ideas. But they also have uh, so many different things going on in their church, different programs and ministries going on in their church that that all these different things kind of choke out the new ideas. Uh, this is the kind of church that uh, uh, new ideas get stuck in committee meetings and it just bounces around from committee to committee and nobody ever ever actually makes a step forward in making this new idea a reality, uh, despite how much they talk about they're excited about it and despite how much they talk about how uh, how much they think that this is God's will for their church and things like that, it just never happens. It, get, it gets choked out by all these different meetings. It gets choked out by all these different programs that they've already got going, and nobody is willing to prioritize things inside of the church. Um, and what this does in the church is it makes the church waste resources much like the previous church, it makes them waste resources, but it also makes them waste opportunities because sometimes God will call a church to change something so that they can reach a certain area uh, in their community or so that they can reach uh, maybe some new people or so that they, they themselves will grow in a new and different way that will make them all more like Christ. And this church will, will, will always miss out on that blessing of how the Lord is wanting to use them because they're too concerned with the things that they already have going on and they just, they just waste these resources and waste these opportunities. And finally, there are churches uh, that are a lot like uh, the good ground or the good, or, or the good soil, right? And uh, these churches are, are churches that uh, have a culture where they're very hopeful, uh, they're very receptive, they're, and, and they're very prayerful, and they're very patient in what, in what they feel like the Lord is calling them to do as a church. And so they allow new ideas, they receive uh, those new ideas and give them a fair hearing. Um, and the, what that, what happens is that since they give those they, they receive those new ideas and they give them a fair hearing, they allow them to grow and they're patient while they grow. This is the the church that is like the good soil. This church uh, seeks the Lord's will for uh, for their church and they accept change in a very wise way. And they use discernment, and they're and they're really focused on God getting as much glory as He can from what their church is doing. I don't think I even have to say it. You and I, we want to be a part of that kind of church, don't we? Uh, 
We want to be a part of a church that lifts God up more than anything else. We want to be a part of a church that lifts God up above traditions, above staying the same and being comfortable with everything. We want to lift God up above a church that gets that is seems like it's very exciting, but there's there's never any long term fruits that come from any of this excitement. We want to lift God up. And we don't want to. We don't want to be a church that uh, that has so many different things going on and so many different meetings that happen that it just ends up choking out anything, uh, any new opportunities that Lord may present us with. No, we want to be the kind of church that wisely and with discernment uh, sees new ideas and receives new ideas, and then and then implements those new ideas that we feel like are truly the Lord's will for our church, and then is patient with those with those ideas. This is the kind of church that you and I want to be a part of. And you know how it happens? It happens with us individually. It happens when you and I are receptive to what the Lord is revealing to us and what the Lord is revealing to uh, the church leadership and what the Lord is is telling us to do in the community around us. It happens when you and I are, are focused on others instead of ourselves. It happens when you and I are focused on the people outside of these walls more than more than we're focused on just the people inside of these walls. Um, and so I encourage you I, that uh, I, I want you to think about this teaching. I want you to consider it, to, to think about how uh, this, is, this is the kind of church that we want to be and what needs to happen within all of our hearts so that we can be this kind of church and continue this kind of church and teach our children um, to, to be uh, this kind of church. I love you. Uh, I, I, I'm thankful to God for you. I'm thankful that we've been able to uh, experience this season of such uh, change uh, that has been thrust upon us. And I'm, I'm hoping and I'm praying that uh, we as a church will be able to uh, embrace change in the future uh, with the same kind of uh, roll with the punches attitude that we've had to be uh, during, this, uh, during this change that's been thrust upon us. Uh, let me pray for you and, uh, and I hope you have a good week. Jesus, we love you so much. God, we thank you uh, that uh, we can be the kind of church that you want us to be. So God, start any kind of change that needs to happen in our church or any kind of change that needs to happen in the future of our church, whether it's a couple years down the road or 10 years down the road or 20 years down the road or however long it needs to be, Lord. uh, Start any of that kind of change in our hearts. Help us to be receptive to what you would want out of our own personal lives so that we'll be receptive to what you want out of our church's life. And Lord, we want to be the kind of church that reaches out to the community around us, that sees lost people get saved, that sees uh, believers in Jesus come to a, a greater level of maturity in their life. And Lord, help it start with us. May we uh, strive uh, after a relationship with you in a more robust way than we ever have before uh, throughout the rest of 2020. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for your death, burial, and resurrection that saves our souls when when we put our trust in you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.